Hey guys, Coach Ro here with Wateration. Um, I am here to uh, talk about something that I think is really important, which is our health. Um, gonna give you guys a couple minutes. I just wanna make sure maybe we get one person on to make sure my mic's still working. Um, I think I sorted out the whole rotation thing um, with the camera. Um, so um, basically, the last time I was on, I um, kind of just to bring you up to speed, the last time I was on, hey, whoever's out there, um, if you could let me know that you can hear me. Um, I'm not sure what kind of stuff I can see on my phone in terms of notifications. Um, so I'll just kind of bring you up to speed. The last time um, I was in the group and I did our 9 a.m., um, I had talked about, um, I shared with you guys my story and how I came into realizing um, that I needed to pick a better path for health and um, you know some of the steps I took some of the things I went through in terms of you know my personal health and you know with going through cancer and then realizing that um, you know I didn't have a good relationship with food and how to figure that out and um, developing the passion that I have for um, health and fitness and knowing that um, I have the ability to share those experiences with people that can help them and um, hopefully keep them from making the same mistakes that I made in terms of my health and going down that path and what seemed like, you know, you see, it seems like you're, you're doing all the right stuff and then uh, you turn around and, um, you know, it just could have been so much easier, I think, if I had known what I know now. Um, so today uh, the topic is uh, reeling in your health for business owners and entrepreneurs. Um, we all need to reel in our health. I mean, there's tons of stuff that's going on in our lives. And the reason why I decided to focus on business owners and entrepreneurs is just because um, there's a certain amount of something that goes into being a business owner um, or an entrepreneur um, in terms of stress levels. Um, when you have a nine to five job, I understand that there are definitely um, demands that are on you. Um, there's schedules and hi, Glenn. Um, you know, deadlines and stuff that you have to meet when you're doing a nine to five. But when you're working for yourself, um, in addition to having that drive, that passion to um, really fulfill that, um, your mission, you know, what you want to do as a business owner, what you're out there to share with the world, um, your skill set, your knowledge, your experience, um, there's a certain drive that comes with it. And it kind of keeps you from doing things that you know are better for your, you know, that are good for yourself. It keeps you from, um, sometimes making rational decisions like I should eat I haven't eaten in you know 12 hours um, or you know maybe I should sleep sleep is good but you know you're just so driven that um, you just end up doing things and the next thing you know you look back and you're like oh my god it's been like six months and um, you know all kinds of weird stuff's happen you know in terms of your health you know you notice that you're doing things that you don't normally do to deal with stress whether it's eating or not eating or drinking or whatever so um, I wanted to kind of just talk about those things. I wanted to share with you my story, um, kind of how things played out in terms of me starting my business for um, for Wateration. And hi, Kimberly. I'm not horizontal. Um, I don't know what that means, but um, <laughs> good morning. Um, yeah, I'm not. Uh, I'll figure out the bringing somebody on at another time. Um, still not sure about the orientation of the camera, but I figured. Um, I don't know, this is working. So, um, you know, I'm gonna start off with sharing my story about starting Wateration and um, kind of some of the things I went through, um, some of my aha moments. Um, and, you know, it's just something to share with you guys in terms of my experience. Maybe it's something similar that you went through. Um, maybe it's something that resonates with you. And if it does, um, hopefully it can um, get you through whatever it is that you're going through with, you know, the things that life brings in addition to your business you know we're all juggling things um, you know as business owners we have families we have um, kids you know I don't have any kids but I can't even imagine if that was added to my plate um, my kudos to all the moms out there and all the dads out there um, it's a whole nother ballpark because you got little people running around that have their own minds of their own and you can't schedule them as nicely as you can with the adults so um, so yeah, I'll be talking about my story, um, some of my aha moments. Uh, I took some notes here that I just wanted to make sure that I really um, touched on these topics because I think they're really important. Um, so to, to start things off, um, 
basically I started um, Wateration. Um, I'm gonna kind of, there's some parts of the story that I'm just kind of shimmy shimmy over, um, just because um, there were some difficult times for me and I don't really want to um, get too emotional here. I want to kind of get through it. Um, and I mean, it's relevant to the story, but I'll just, if things don't kind of add up, maybe that's part of the shimmy shimmy part. Um, so um, I started Wateration in 2017. Um, I think I got my LLC in uh, July. Um, they just started cutting the grass next door. So if you guys have a hard time hearing me, um, I apologize for that. Uh, I'm actually taking Jeff uh, Levine's lead here with being outside. It is a lot nicer to be out here and kind of watch things go on. Um, definitely feel very privileged to be out here and have the opportunity to do this. So um, I started Wateration in 2017 in July. Um, I got my LLC and I was like, I've got a company. I've got an LLC. I've got a tax ID number and I'm a company. And um, I don't really know. I mean, what did that mean? You know, like, do I get a website? Um, so I got a website and I'm like, yeah, I got a website. I'm a company. Um, and I really just didn't know what was going on. I did know that, um, you know, I wanted to get my L1 for CrossFit. Um, I knew that I wanted to get my um, ACE personal training certification. Um, I knew that I wanted to get a nutrition certification. I knew that there's all these things to do, but I was like, I'm a company. And um, so, I mean, what do you do? There's email marketing, there's all kinds of stuff you can do. So I was just kind of like grabbing at whatever to do. And in the meantime, um, I'll note that my health at that time, um, in terms of, if you could measure health in pounds, I was about 40 pounds lighter than I am now, um, which you shouldn't mother, measure your health in pounds. Um, there's other aspects to it. But I, seriously, I felt like I had a really good balance. Um, I was working full time at uh, a company great relationship with the people that I worked with, my coworkers, so balanced. I was able to um, work out like I wanted to on my schedule. Um, I was able to rock the day job and um, just crush it and also be able to keep my nutrition in check. I mean, I was eating exactly how I needed to. I was hitting all my macros, like to the gram. And I was in the best shape of my life. I mean, I went to CrossFit and I was burping everywhere and I was doing this and I was crushing it. I was just being so awesome. And I was just like, this is great. It's fantastic. And you know, here I am, I'm a business owner. I have my LLC. I'm a business owner, right? I'm sending out emails to people. I'm a business owner. Um, I'm, uh, you know, I, I look the part, I'm a personal trainer and I've almost got abs. And I mean, I was just, I was on cloud nine. I was doing awesome. I was doing so, so awesome. And, um, unfortunately, uh, some, things took a turn for kind of the worst in my life and I ended up getting let go from that job and I had never been let go from a job before um, it is horrible it crushed me um, this is the part where I kind of smooth over um, and um, I ended up getting a job working for a friend of mine who um, worked at a co uh, construction recruiting firm so to kind of back up a little bit, my experience is in construction. I've been in the construction industry for like 20 years. And um, I had actually uh, reached out to him when I realized that I didn't have a job. And I said to him, I said, Kyle, can you please, um, you know, find me a job? That's what, that was my goal. And he and I had actually been talking prior about me doing some consulting work with him because, um, you know, with recruiting, you need um, awesome, all right, thank you, Kimberly. I'll see you soon. Um, so, um, so yeah. So basically, um, I had said we had talked about me doing some consulting work because you know I've been in the construction industry for 20 years, and he has a bunch of recruiters on his team that are recruiting for positions in the construction industry. So, um, you know, he's like, it's perfect. You can come in. Um, you know, definitely outside of your day job, you can come in. Uh, maybe put together some training material for us, um, or just talk to them about, you know, how they could uh, maybe address some of the. Um, I don't know what the word is for it, but uh, just some of the things they run into when they try to recruit somebody on the phone. Things that they can kind of talk their lingo to kind of reel them in, and um, get them on as a candidate so that they can go and find that that candidate a job. 
And I was like, that's amazing. So um, when I reached out to him to um, be, um, to look for a job for me, he was like, dude, like, why don't you just come work for me? And I was like, oh my God, this totally makes sense. Um, I had known Kyle previously. He had gotten me a job prior um, at another company prior to the one that I was at and let go from. And I was like, huh. And then I thought about it and I'm like, it's a commission only job. I'm like, what does that mean? And he's like, well, it means that you have to place a candidate at a company and they have to sign the offer letter. And then like 14 days later, you get a check. And I was like, 14 days. Well, what happens in the meantime while I'm like working with this candidate and I'm working with this company? And he's like, well, we can kind of figure that out. And um, I'm not really um, a religious person, but um, I can tell you that there has been ever since I was like, oh, there's been a series of events that have taken place that I just can't help but think that there's, I'm just so grateful. I'm so grateful and it's, that's, I, I, can, o I can only show gratitude for it. I don't know how it happened, um, but I'm just oh so grateful that um, I've been fortunate with it. And it's funny because I don't talk to anyone, you know, in terms of um, religion. I don't talk to a higher being and um, consult with them like other people do, you know, depending on what their position is. Um, I'm kind of more of a universe kind of believing person, but um, every now and then um, I do sh do a little shout out and say thank you and um, kind of ask the universe if they could just let other people know that I'm oh so grateful for them being in my lives, uh, being in my life, um, because um, it's allowed me to come to where I am now and really solidify things for me in terms of what my course in my life is gonna be. Um, so much stuff has happened, I can't even tell you. That's just been like one door shutting, like immediately shutting and immediately another one opening and it's like, wow. Um, so anyways, I went to, you know, I decided that I was gonna go and work for um, this recruiting company and, you know, I felt good about it. I had a good previous relationship with the owner. Um, and, you know, I basically told him, I was like, dude, you know, I, I've never done this before. I kind of need a paycheck. Is there something that you can figure out? And he actually, um, I forget what it's called. There's a terminology, but um, he actually, I think it's called a draw or something. But he actually was like, you know what, Ro? He's like, I know you're going to kick ass. I know you're going to do so awesome. Um, I think he let me have a draw, which is basically like a loan against the company. Um, and so the next, you know, the first placement I got, and when I got my commission check, that would go towards paying down the draw. Um, and I was like, okay, okay, I can do this. Um, I've never had a job like this before in sales, so to speak. Um, I've never had to do cold calling. Um, it was really scary for me. But then part of me was like, so you're a business owner, right, Ro? I mean, you went and got the LLC. You have a website. You're a business owner. What do you think you're going to be doing as a business owner, exactly. And I'm like, probably sales, probably cold calling, probably talking to a bunch of strangers like that I had never met, trying to introduce them to the concept of my company and the services I provide. Um, kind of like recruiting. I mean, it's basically um, going out there and making connections on purpose um, with an, you know, the intent to establish a relationship so that um, you can do business together. And I was like, wow, I get to do this. I get to learn how to do this kind of um, with a friend. And he's pretty much made it so that um, I can somewhat do it comfortably. Granted, it was substantially less than what I was making salary wise um, at the previous job that I was let go from. But it was something that I was like, okay, I, I have, you know, I can, I can do this for three months. Um, I can, I make, maybe I can do this for six months. I'll see how it goes. I was willing to let it see how, it, you know, how things um, turned out. I really hope you can still hear me. Uh, it's pretty loud here with the uh, lawnmowers. I guess I probably should have gotten the schedule down before I scheduled this outside um, and coordinated. Um, so that's what I did. And um, because I was in the construction industry, you know, my, the owner of the company assured me, he's like, you know, Ro, you already have these relationships. Um, you can go out there and just let them know that you've switched over. This is what you're doing now. And um, 
I was like, yeah, yeah, that's true. That's true. I do have these relationships. I can totally switch over and be like, hey, this is what I'm doing now. Do you need anyone? And that's what I did. And the response I got was, I thought you were an estimator, Ro. And I was like, um, well, I'm not anymore. I'm a, I'm a recruiter. Um, you know, and all the, you know, I was still dealing with everything that happened at the previous place. And I was just, you know, how I felt about it. And um, I'm like, no, well, you know, this is what I'm doing now. So um, I was actually able to um, recruit a, a couple of clients. That was the other thing, too, is that you're either, they call it full desk. So you can be a recruiter that works with the candidates and the clients. Um, but he was starting this new thing where you kind of had account managers. So they go out and find the companies that need candidates. And then we have a whole different crew working on um, finding candidates to put to match them. So you have two people that are involved with placing a candidate. And it's actually kind of nice because you develop a skill set. You really get to hone your skill set in terms of being client facing versus candidate facing. Um, another thing that I was like, whoa, I get to like learn this under pretty ideal conditions considering everything that happened. Um, so, you know, I was able to secure a couple of clients and they were like, yeah, you know, like they say to all recruiters, yeah, sure, you know, you can find someone. Um, here's, you know, our um, job description and go ahead and, and do that. So um, I'll tell you, working as a recruiter um, is definitely, it's super hard. Um, first of all, people generally, you kind of get the whole salesy thing. So people generally don't um, want to talk to you. Um, so it's really hard. You go to networking events. Um, you're on all the time, literally, because because it's sales, um, when an opportunity comes up, if you're in the middle of something at home, you're in the middle of um, wherever you're at, if an opportunity comes up and you're like, oh my God, this could be a potential close, I could close this deal, I could make some money so that I can continue living, you drop everything and you do it. And um, that's the thing about being a business owner too, you know, you have these investments, these time investments that you make. and when it comes back around and you're like, oh my gosh, this is it, this is, I'm gonna get another client or I'm gonna get um, additional business, you drop everything. And a lot of times you end up dropping yourself um, to make those, to meet those demands. And it's just, it's just passion. It's nothing more than passion. Um, you know, it's not like we're self-sabotaging and denying, you know, when we hate ourselves and that's why we're doing it. I mean, it's really, I, I honestly believe it's just passion and, um, you're just so wrapped up in being a business owner and being excited about what you do that, you know, you're like, this is great. This is happening. This is really working. This is confirmation that I need that what I'm doing as an entrepreneur and as a business owner is it's all coming to fruition. Like it's all coming together. This means this is what I'm supposed to do. So, I mean, that happened a lot at, at this recruiting company that I was at, um, you know, because you get hyped and you're working with, <clears throat> excuse me, um, yeah, that's really loud, by the way. Um, so you get hyped, right? I'm all hyped up and I'm like, oh, I got this client that wants to pay, you know, um, a six figure salary, which is phenomenal because usually it's like a 25 to 30% commission. I mean, that's a shit ton of money. Uh, granted, I didn't get all of that, you know, that went, part went to the owner and you get a, a percentage of that, but I mean, that's a lot of money. That's like, well, bam, like that's like three months, six months worth of salary right then and there if you close that deal, right? So it's very, very um, enticing to do. So, you know, I get the perfect client and I get this candidate and they, they have a three hour interview, right? Three hour interview. He met everyone in the company. He was looking for a six-figure salary. Company wants to pay a six-figure salary. I'm like, yes, yes, it's awesome. Everything lines up. Everyone loves them. And then all of a sudden, client decides to move to Iowa. Hey, I'm going to move to Iowa. I was like, wow, that never came up when we were talking to you about this job. Like, he's like, well, you know, I figured, you know, it's not really any of your business. Um, you know, what we plan on doing as a family. And I'm like, yeah, true. Um, but I worked really hard for no money for free to um, what I get you to this point to what I thought was going to be the next step in your career. And you pull the rug out from under me. So, you know, that's weeks, months worth of work that I had put in and it's just poof, gone. And that was very disappointing. Um, very, 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 very disappointing. 
and I express that to the owner and he's like, you know what happens? That's just what happens. And I'm like, okay. I'm like, you know, and I chalk that up. I'm like, hey, hey, bro, you're a business owner, right? You got a website, you got an LLC, you're a business owner. You got an FEIN number, you're a business owner. Shit like that's going to happen, right? Um, things are going to fall through. You're not going to be able to, you know, not everything's going to go the way you want. Not every client you talk or prospect you talk to is going to turn into a client. Um, it's just a little bit harder of a blow because it was commission. It was 30% of a hundred thousand dollars. So that's 30 grand. That's a lot of money. Um, and you work so hard for free, um, on your own time and on your own budget, trying to ration things that you need that commission check at some point. And, um, so that's kind of what, um, I started. So let me back up a little bit. So there I am, right? I, I went into this position in the best shape of my life, okay? Um, 147 pounds, crushing it, burpees galore, lateral burpees, like everything. I was running seven miles every other day. I mean, I was on the verge of having visible abs. It was amazing. I mean, it was just fantastic. My endurance was fantastic. But as the schedule carried on, um, you know, I'm working, I'm literally doing all my work from my phone at on my on the couch till like one two o'clock in the morning and i'm sitting there and i'm trying to post media i'm trying to find people on hey jeff um trying to find people on linkedin looking at their profiles are they going to meet any of the requirements the client wants and i'm just all night long all night long i'm just working 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 because i'm like you know the more work i put in the more time i put in right the better return i'm going to get and this is my whole thinking you know all along and this is a similar thinking that people get into when they um morning when they start their own business is they think, you know, more, 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 more. I'm going to put more time in. Um, I'll do that later. Um, I'm going to put more time in this and then more time equals more money. And, um, you know, you work really hard to, to do that and you're burning the candle at both ends and you're, um, you know, trying to find the time to do all this stuff. And then also include family, include all this. And you just push yourself to the, to the side. And, um, that's what I was doing. I was literally, I was, I was burning the candle at both ends. I essentially, I mean, I could feel like the news tightening around my neck because I didn't have a commission check was coming. Two months went by, three months went by. And the owner was like, you're going to, it's going to break any day, any day now, bro, it's going to break. It's going to break. You're awesome. You're so awesome at what you do. You've brought so much value to the company. You're going to be great. And I'm like, and I believed it. And I, you know, and I was, I was great. I did get a lot of things to the table negotiations. Um, None of them actually closed. Uh, I think one or two closed. But, you know, again, I had that draw going. So whatever money did come in, it went back to the company because he lent me money basically to get me to this point. But I remember thinking for some reason, for some silly, silly reason, I thought every all that work I did to get to that point of health, being awesome and almost having visible abs um, was that was it. That's all I needed to do. I was there. I was back in my old high school shape and, um, you know, back into a size six and everything was great. Um, that's all I needed to do. I mean, I did it. Accomplished. Check. Off the check. You know, off the list. Be healthy. Get healthy. Almost visible abs. Checked it off the list. But with all this stress, um, I started to just kind of do things. I honestly started to do things that I never used to do under stress because this was like extreme stress because I wasn't getting a paycheck, a regular paycheck. I mean, I had to really go out there and hunt for my food just like a business owner does and an entrepreneur does. You have to go out and get your own food. And I mean, people will come in. We had a girl that worked with us. She was an amazing baker. Oh my God, an amazing baker. And she would come in with these sugar cookies. I don't eat sugar cookies. I don't have a sweet tooth, but I eat the sh crap out of those things. I mean, they were so good and they were so satisfying and they did absolutely nothing for my health in terms. I mean, I just packed it on just kept packing it on and um you know didn't put any um effort into continuing my fitness that I did going to CrossFit couldn't afford CrossFit either so that stopped because you know I wasn't getting like CrossFit or pay for groceries so um again these are things that we give up as owners because you know we have to make certain other things um, ends meet in order to um, continue living and you know we make these sacrifices and um, it just finally, honestly, it just finally got to the point um, where it was starting to look like it's not really going to be something that I'm cut out for. And I really wanted to be cut out for it because I knew there, I mean, it still is too. I mean, uh, 
the job I work at now, um, we actually have, uh, you know, I'm the one that actually works with the recruiters and they are making mad money. I mean, it's definitely, um, when you got the touch, you definitely can make a, a lot of money. But I, it just wasn't happening. I mean, it was like five months, six months, and it just wasn't happening. And um, again, another one of these moments, these moments where um, you don't know if somebody's looking out for you, but a door closes and another one opens. And one of my clients that I was working with that I actually, you know, I'd reached out to companies I knew before, other subcontractors, um, general contractors that I worked with before in the past or heard of and reached out to them to see if they needed any candidates. And um, I had reached out to what is now my current employer, but um, at the time they were my client and I he was like, hey, you guys need anyone? And they're an electrical company. So, um, you know, I had a couple of um, field guys, journeymen, that had reached out to me and were like, hey, you know, I want to come in from the field into the office. And I was like, oh man, that's a hard sell. Like it's a big hard sell because like you don't have usually those guys don't come with computer skills um they there's a huge learning curve for them so i'm like oh it's gonna be hard to sell i'm not sure so i had about a handful of them and i said you know what i'm gonna go i'm gonna go into this their office to my client's office and i'm gonna i'm gonna pitch these five guys well these five people there's a there's a girl in there too that wanted to um get in from the field because working in the field's really hard um on your body and all that stuff so i go in there and i pitch them and um, long story short, I mean, I ended up knowing, I met with uh, the vice president of the company and their business development woman. And long story short, um, I, well, I knew, I knew the business development woman from previous encounters. So that was great where we got, we got to like um, connect and all that stuff. And I go in there to pitch them and um, they were like, you know, oh, we'll let you know. So that's, you know, that's what happens. You kind of, they'll let us know. And um, so the door closing, something you know happens at this recruiting company and door closes, right? Totally slams in my face. And I'm trying to figure out what's going on in life and I get a phone call. And I get a phone call from what is now, like I said, my current employer. And he says to me, is that your recruiting company? And I said, no, sir, it's not. I work for someone. He's like, all right, well, how do you feel about coming in for an interview? And I was like, I think I'm gonna I'm gonna give this a try, so um, I went in for an interview and ironically um, myself, um, which is really kind of funny to explain because I ended up starting on the same day as my candidate. They ended up hiring my candidate, which was awesome, and he's an amazing dude, um, funny guy, really funny guy. I think everyone likes him. I'm pretty sure everyone likes him. Um, so that was weird because then I had to explain to my candidate that um, hey, you know, just so you know, I'll see you there on Monday um, and he was like that's weird why how does that happen and I'm like I don't know how it happens but um, it's how it happens and with that door closing I you know started wondering like why is this why is this happening to me why are these doors shutting these doors opening I mean it was like you ever see dominoes you know so one falls and it was just but the doors were doing it and it was just it was crazy it was so crazy so and then I'm like okay this new company um, well, it's like three minute drive from my house. That's cool. Um, uh, all the people there are people actually I've actually crossed paths with, like the business development woman. I had crossed paths with her previously in the industry. Um, several people that I'd be, I'd be working with closely and actually four, one of them's actually my supervisor. Um, I had worked with before at another employer. So I was like, oh my God, this is awesome. I know all these guys. These guys know I can kick ass. I don't have to prove myself again. I'm three minutes from home. And I'm a business owner. This is perfect. This is perfect. I don't have to worry about commute times. I don't have to worry about, I can do both of these things. This is awesome. And I'll have the capital I need to run my business because I'll have a full-time job and I won't, it took the risk out of everything um, to be able to have that. And I was just like, wow, this is so weird. Um, but it was meant to be, right? It had to be meant to be because um, it was just like, it seemed like it was like, just another um, note to me that like, hey, you know what, you're on the right path. Whatever it is you're doing, you're on the right path and you should keep doing it. And you struggled a little bit, but you took a shot at it. And now you know what goes into running a business. You know that you're, there's gonna be times where um, you're gonna have to be, you know, you're gonna have to pivot and you're gonna have to figure things out. Um, and 
just come up. I mean, as a business owner, you just can't, you know, set your sights and just go right for it. I mean, they, they have memes out there, you know, where you're going zigzagging all around, just trying to balance and pivot with life. You know, things come up and you're like, oh, shit. Um, and I got to do that, you know, at the recruiting place a little bit. So I was like, this is great. This is perfect. Um, so, you know, fast forwarding, that ends up actually being, that whole process ends up being um, almost, I think, nine months um, went by. So I lost nine months of starting my business, really starting it and getting an idea of what it means to run a business and what it means to get clients and really reach out and do organic outreach and all the stuff that I'm doing now um, and not just have a website and wait for people to come in and show up. Um, so that's pretty much when um, I decided that I was like, okay, this is great. You know, I was very uh, confident about the skill set I came to this company with. Um, I, you know, this the company I work for now, um, and like I said, it took the risk out of it for me. Um, I'm definitely, you know, there's expenses and stuff that come up and I'm able to afford those things for waterration because I do have, you know, I have income that can support that. And it's just, it's just a, a perfect scenario, I think, for, um, for coming up, for succeeding in this. And the ironic thing is that when I first started rod waterration is that, um, you know, the whole plan was that, oh, you know, I'm going to start my business and eventually I'll be a business owner. I mean, who knows, or like a real business, you know, like where I'm, if that's the only thing I'm doing. It's my only source of income. I don't know how long that was going to take, but it's like, that's what people do, right? When they start a business, they say, you start a business to be on your own in the business. So, you know, that was going to be the plan. But I mean, where I work now, I mean, I just, it's crazy. I absolutely, I mean, this is probably the, one of the few places that I worked at where I actually like every single person I work with and I have a great deal amount of respect for everyone that I work with and it works like I'm three miles from home I don't have a commute time I can burn the candle at both ends because I have that additional time to do that um I'm also you know advocating for women's health in the construction industry so being in construction still lets me kind of keep my uh finger on the heartbeat of the industry and understand kind of things that people struggle with um you know, in terms of health and balancing that stuff um, and be able to talk to my clients in the same language that they're using because I'm familiar with it because I'm still in the industry. So it helps me talk to the younger generation. It helps me talk to the older generation because I was there working in there. Um, now I'm able to, and you know, I'm a member of NAWIC, which is National Association of Women in Construction. That lets me connect with the younger generation to find out what's going on now, how have things changed since I started doing that stuff, um, you know, because I pretty much do things, I mean, I don't want to be an old dog, but I pretty much do things the same way I did before with some improvements, you know, I do try to learn the new softwares that come through, um, but they just have a whole different perspective. I mean, millennials, Gen X, whatever they're called, they just have completely different perspectives on stuff, and it's really, um, it's actually, it's... Um, I don't know what the word is for it. It's refreshing. You know, you see their perspective and you're like, oh man, I never thought that way. And it's great because it's like, okay, well, if you think that way, that's fantastic. Um, they usually have a very optimistic view on everything, which is fantastic. It's a great way to build relationships. Um, it kind of gets you out of a rut. So all of this has been about my employment, right? And all this stuff that's happened, stress and what I did and how I just thought that, um, Lo and behold, you know, I got healthy, check that's off the list, don't have to worry about it again, and then ended up creeping back on me. So another funny thing that I thought is that I'm a personal trainer. I don't need a personal trainer. I'm going to train myself. That's right. Well, here's the thing. When you're a personal trainer, um, you spend a lot of time, uh, or a health coach, you spend a lot of time doing those things for other people, so programming and coming up with workouts, and then when it comes up to programming the stuff for you, um, even though I know burpees are probably a good way to like really burn that extra, um, energy, I'm not going to program burpees for me. If I do, who's to say I'm doing it at the pace that I should. I mean, maybe I'm just kind of chipping away at it. Um, and just with everything going on, it actually ended up being like two years. I had stepped away from CrossFit and I finally realized I can't be my own coach. I just can't. There's too much going on. Um, it's kind of like if you're, I mean, not to compare um, doctors and lawyers, but like, you know, if you're a doctor, you're not going to operate on yourself. Um, if you're, you know, a trainer, I mean, you have better ideas as to where you should be with things. But, um, 
you know, you certainly um, tend to overthink things because they're more personal and all that stuff. So recently, within the last couple of months, I actually joined CrossFit to kind of get that part back in, in terms of schedule, excuse me, and establishing that routine. Um, as far as the eating part of it, um, one of the things I did keep pretty consistent once I started over at my new employer is I went back to counting macros and counting macros is part of a system that's called flexible dieting. And I'm going to talk about that a little bit more for you guys, just to give you an idea of, um, how important that is. And I just realized I have no idea what time it is. Um, if somebody knows if you could put it in the comments, that would be great. I don't, I can talk. Um, so I went back to macros and one of the things I wasn't happy about, even though I was 40 pounds lighter, um, than I am today. And I was that size six and I had almost visible abs. Um, I didn't like the fact that I also had what I thought to be a body of a 12 year old boy. Um, I lost a lot of, uh, my curves. Um, I'm generally a pretty curvy person. I lost a lot of like my female traits in terms of like hips and, you know, I had no boobs whatsoever. They were completely gone. Everything was just flat. Um, and I said to myself, okay, well, I don't want that to happen again when I get back on, you know, I'm getting back on. I'm going to start the healthy lifestyle. I don't want that to happen again at all. So, you know, I've been trying to find that balance with nutrition and, you know, keep that routine going with um, working out and everything. And the thing about flexible nutrition that I absolutely, absolutely love is that nothing is off limits. And this, if you take anything away from this, Google flexible nutrition, because no matter what you're doing in your life, if you're an athlete or just an average Joe that wants to, or Jane, that wants to um, improve their health and improve their body composition, whether it's up or down, look up flexible nutrition. And the great thing about it is that it's because nothing's off limits. There are no restrictions in food. You can have alcohol, you can have beans, you can have carbs. What it does is it takes the, it takes the luster off of it. You know, all these other um, fad diets that are out there, it's the, uh, you know, oh, you can't have chocolate. And it just puts chocolate on such this high, this high pedestal that when you do have it, you just want to have it and you want to have it so much more. But if it's just amongst the rest of the stuff and you kind of see chocolate every once in a while, when it does come around, you're like, you know what, chocolate? I'm going to see you next week anyway, so catch you later. And that's what I love about it. I love the fact that it takes that luster off of it. I love the fact that if you want to have your carbs with, um, you know, a pound of broccoli or you want to have it with um, bread or pretzels or you want to have it with a beer, you want to eat, drink your carbs, you certainly can. And it's, it's about executing moderation. Um, and that's kind of how it ties into, you know, moderation is that it was a workout, get your workout of the day and learn how to eat in moderation. Um, so like I said, I mean, there's so many components that go into flexible dieting. There's definitely um, extremes and more moderate ways to do it. Um, the extremes is definitely weighing all of your food and paying attention to whether or not they're cooked. It's cooked or not cooked because there's extra water, um, getting complete proteins and all this stuff. But if you're just starting, um, my absolute first advice is just to write down what you're eating. Just keep a food diary. Don't worry about the calories. Don't worry about anything else. Just keep a food diary. If you can and you have the additional time and the capacity to do it, maybe throw in a little bit like end of day feels or beginning of the day feels also that just kind of, um, so you have something to correlate back to maybe if your eating habits change pretty drastically, it's like, Oh, well, well, I'm really stressed. All the ice cream disappears. Okay. Well now I know that about myself. It's data, you know, it's just collecting data. Um, keep a food log. And the only second thing I would say is to, um, make sure each meal that you have and it's, you know, some people say to eat five meals or six meals or only three meals or fast or whatever, whatever your time frame is, whatever your schedule is for you, make sure that that meal has a protein, a fat and a carb in it. And that's a whole nother, that's going to be a whole nother live, but you just, those two things right there, you will see, you will see progress 100%. And then when it comes to working out, I mean, no one says you have to go balls to the walls and sign up for a gym membership. Um, you can simply just start with walking. Walking is a great way to work your heart, to work those muscles. Um, if you're not sure or you're intimidated by the gym, 
there's all kinds of DVDs. If you have Comcast, my God, you can go on there and like, there's all kinds of stuff on demand that you can go on there. You can do it in the privacy of your own home. You can YouTube it. There's all sorts of resources to tell you what to do to get active. But again, we, it's not self-sabotaging. We're just passionate about the things that we do as business owners. And although we know what we can do, do we do it? No, obviously, um, you know, we tend to put ourselves last. And I, that's when I ask you guys to kind of tap into your business owner self. When your business owner self says, I need to call these five people because these five people are going to be leads for something or they're going to, um, you know, I can give them a service that's going to really help them. And in turn, we'll build this relationship. You make sure to call those five people because your business depends on it. So turn it around and be that business owner to yourself. I scheduled a 5.30 a.m. workout for myself. I'm going to be there because that's what I did. As a professional, as a business owner, I'm a responsible person. And I told myself I would give myself that workout that morning. So you do it. Granted, there are mornings where I wake up and I'm like, I'm not going anywhere right now. I'm just going to go back to sleep. But what I've come to realize is that when I do go back to sleep, see a 5.30 a.m. workout works for me because I don't have, nothing has to be compromised. Um, I don't have any repercussions. If I go to that workout, I don't have to think that's it, it's done. I don't have to worry about it. What I've come to realize is that if I sleep in, which happens, I mean, you're tired. I mean, mentally, physically, whatever, emotionally exhausted. um, I've come to realize that if I sleep in, something's gonna have to give come the evening if I wanna go. I mean, that's just how time works. If you don't use that slot for what it was allocated for, I used it to sleep. There's a slot later in the afternoon that I'm going to fill with working out. And whatever was in there, maybe it's dinner. Um, it's usually dinner. And it just gets pushed. But like, so dinner gets pushed. But then what was I going to do in there? Was I going to do marketing for the for my business, you know, for Waterration? Well, then that gets pushed. Um so everything gets kind of pushed around. So I, that's kind of honestly one of the things that gets me motivated out of bed because I'm like, if you don't go right now, Ro, like you're not going to get your stuff done. You have client calls later in the evening. Like, how are you going to work that out? And this is all running through my head at like quarter to five. Um, just get up. Um, and I'm human, you know. I tell it to shut up and I go back to sleep because I want to go to sleep. Um, and it just happens. Um, but you just run through this stuff and you do it enough times with yourself that you realize that just get up and do it you won't have any regrets there's no way you're going to go to the gym and be like man that was a waste of time there's no way you're going to go and you're it's, you're not going to have any regrets so as a business owner I just think it's just you just gotta it's time to level up and set time aside for yourself you deserve that time um so um one of the other notes I just wanted to touch on too you know there's all these um, suggestions out there, advice out there about how to get started, right? Um, you have people out there that are like, you know, get started with a detox, two week detox, or get started with, um, I don't know, drop everything that you're doing and get started with this. And then other people are like, no, 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 small changes, small changes, start with water or start with a walk. And I think it really depends on the person on how that happens. And I think a lot of it actually kind of, you might be able to kind of get a clue of how you might best start a journey to better health based on how you started your company, I think. Um, If you're the type of person to go, wee, just jump right off and just do it and whatever happens, happens, you got your straw and you're doing it, Um, you're very comfortable in that arena. So you know what? Jump right off five days a week, start working out, boom, change your whole diet. And you might fall off, but that's just kind of how... um, that's just how you handle things. And you got other people when they start their business, you know, they're very meticulous. They want to research things. They want to make sure everything is perfect and in place before they do it. Well, them starting a new regimen by jumping off the cliff is not going to, it's going to be very unsettling for them and it's not going to last. So they should maybe take that smaller, you know, that um, little bit approach where they do more water or, you know, maybe they do just one class a week or whatever. Um, Me personally, I tend to be pretty spontaneous. So like with smoking, right? It probably took me five or six shots to uh, quit smoking. And each and every time I did it, the only time I did it as kind of like slowly 
easing myself off was when I was using Chantex and that's how you're supposed to do it. You're supposed to start the medication and eventually, and you just keep smoking and eventually it's supposed to keep you, it's supposed to make the cigarettes taste so that you like taste bad so you don't want to smoke anymore. But any other time it was cold turkey. It was like, oh, I'm going to take, you know, detox pills that were sold on the internet for quitting smoking and I'm going to take that and then I'm going to quit. And then, you know, you quit for however long and then you end up going back to it. Same thing with healthy lifestyle. Like it takes a couple shots, you know, you've created a lifestyle for yourself that has all these habits and that you've made just by the process of being there, you know, you're, you're coping, you're pivoting and things are adjusting and things are falling into place the way they can so that you can continue to go on with, you know, your day and provide for your family and stuff. And then you look back and you're like, it's not really what I wanted to do with my health, but sometimes it seems overwhelming and like, how do you turn around and go back? Well, you don't turn around and go back. You just keep going forward. You just make some changes. Um, so, and I'm, you know, I'm doing it as a trainer, as a health coach, I'm doing it. Um, I'm making those small changes. I'm trying to figure out, you know, what's the, what's the, where's that line between, um, being able to handle a full-time job and being able to handle, um, running my business also in addition to that and being married and having a relationship with my husband, a healthy relationship with my husband. I mean, how do you balance all that stuff out, you know, and then eating healthy and staying active. And it's just about scheduling that time for myself because I'm worth it. Um, you know, and there's, when you're, when you have a schedule like that, you just got to put it in there. You got to write yourself in and you got to be a professional and treat yourself professionally and give yourself that time. So, um, like I said, I have no idea where I am on time. Um, I hope that this was helpful for you. Um, you know, and, and I, I do kind of, I had a note here that I do kind of want to touch on when it comes to being healthy, you know, none of this stuff is purely about weight loss. I mean, there are all kinds of coping mechanisms that people use to deal with stress, to deal with life events that are chaotic and take us out of our element and just whoo. And you're like, Oh my God, I've never dealt with this before. What do you do? Fight or flight, right? Um, fight, flight or Oreos. Um, but everybody has their own coping mechanism. So you got people that over caffeinate, over caffeinate, you got people that don't eat, do the complete opposite. And they just don't eat because they have no appetite because they're so stressed out or, um, you know, alcohol, people that have to go home every night and, you know, have a beer or two beers or three beers, or just get completely wasted so that they could just sever the workday from, you know, and get on, you like, I don't know, to sever the, the day and just go into this like, you know, peaceful sleep or whatever. I mean, everyone's got their advice for dealing with stress and getting to a healthier lifestyle is being able to find a balance. It's not about losing weight. It's not about um, having physical abs. It's not about um, being able to fit into a size six. Um, it's about having that balance and being able to do the things you want to do in life all the things you're passionate about, all the people you're passionate about, enjoy that time with them. Another thing, no restrictions, right? Flexible dieting, no restrictions. That means somebody has a birthday party at the bar, you can go there. You can have a beer, you can have cheesy dip, you can have all that stuff. It's just about moderation. It's all about moderation. And when you execute moderation, you're never deprived. You can have whatever you want. So um, that's basically what I have to say about that. Um, I really do think that, um, you know, as a business owner, it's, it's just something you have to do. You got a man up and or a woman up. Um, so I'll end with this, uh, coach row with moderation. I am, um, though I'm an advocate for uh, women's health in the construction and AEC industry. I know that, um, health, is obviously something that affects all of us and it affects all aspects of our lives. And I wanted to give you guys some value and share my experience with you and share some of my, um, my methods for, for coping. And hopefully it helps you guys do what you do better and continue to, um, succeed in all your endeavors. Um, if you guys happen to know of any companies that are interested in um, maybe getting that message across to their employees, it's not necessarily a wellness program, but if you happen to know anyone um, in the construction industry, it would be helpful to bring my name up and um, you know maybe I can connect with them and see if that's something that I can do and I can dive into a little bit um, more detail about that flexible dieting and really give them those, those tools. I mean, the tools are there, they're everywhere. I mean, you can Google it and the tools are there. Um, but give them the tools and share that experience with them so that they can apply it to their lives and really see it work. So 
All right, guys, happy Friday. I hope you guys have a great weekend. Um, and I will, I, I'll see you next week, actually. I have another 9 a.m., so looking forward to it. Bye, guys.